But now we're, let's talk about uh, Latin America, you know, where the beach is sunny and the developers grow from the trees and there are all these wonderful news that the market is expanding like a really weird rates and everything is going to be like super cool there. It's a lie. It's going to be terrible, but let's talk about it. Well, first, who is this guy who's talking about? Uh, I'm co-founder of Epic Llama Games. Uh, I will have a company that has like nine years of making games. We make a lot of games for browser market. Then we do games for mobile for PC. We make uh, RPGs, puzzles, beat em ups, racing games, whatever, a lot of games. We won uh, some international awards like the FGL Ninja Awards for Champion of Chaos 2. And we won the Indie Prize uh, this year with the uh, Darkest Little Castle. So good for us. I'm a speaker. I've been given lectures like four years already. Uh, I'm a member of ADVA. The Argentinian developer of video games organization in Argentina. Uh, I'm part of the Mesa de Productora Audio. Oh, it doesn't read, but it's Mesa Audiovisual de Cordoba, that is an organization that push uh, a few, uh, a good love to make video games in Cordoba. And uh, I'm the Casual Connect ambassador in Latin America, and I'm a terrible magician, as you just saw. So, uh, with the thing that give me this background about Latin America, it's not only that I'm from Argentina, but also that I travel a lot from the, around the region, talking with devs and what is going on there. So that's, that is me. Now let's talk about what Latin America has to offer to you. First is the game market. That means the users that you can buy, that, I mean the, the, the money that you can give from your games that you release in Latin America, and also the development market. The developers that are there, that you can hire, that you can outsource, that you can get games to release around the world. So, first let's talk about the market. The market has been growing like a lot in Latin America and everyone knows that it's like 40%, then 18%, then 20% and the rate of growing is, like, the trend is like it's going to grow more, more, more and more. And you sometimes read articles that say, well, Latin America is going to become in some point, some kind of Asia or something with a huge market because it's in development and suddenly it's going to bloom like skyrocket. And if you see the piece of land that is Latin America, you see, okay, it's like 25% of the world, so, it's, so it will become great at some point. But the size of the market in Latin America is just 4% of the global market. So those 20% are not that huge. It's just, we are advancing, I mean, it was a really, really undevelopment, undevelopment market, and now it's starting to grow, but it's not that good. Of course, it's 4.1 billion dollars, so who doesn't want that money? It's, I mean, it's, of course I want that money, but for the size of the country and for these rates that you see, oh, it's growing like crazy, it's not like it's going to go, like, super high. Why? Because all Latin America, all that place that you see is just 9% of the world population. India, just India, is the double of people that we are. All the, all that, all the land that you see there is empty. You, you, we, we don't have that many people. You, if you want to steal a piece of Argentina, just go with a few guns and, and, and no one is going to contest this, you know? Uh, also, we are not big uh, spenders. We are not used to spend money on video games. And uh, the income of Latin America in general is low to middle income, which is good because you have like some places that they spend some money on the on the games, but it's not that big uh, that uh, that big spender. So you are not going to have like uh, it's not going to grow more. I mean, you have here the roof, nine percent of the world population. We are we cannot grow more than that because we are not that many people, and since we don't spend that much, I bet that the higher that we can grow is around 6% of the, of the cake of the market. Also, well, we have a culture of non paying for games. I mean, this guy, that, this picture over there is when a movie comes, when a game comes, you can buy it just in the street at five pesos, that it's like at a quarter of a dollar. And yes, it's, I mean, it costs you most, more to download it in a period in Pirate Bay or something like that, to just go and buy to the guy in the game or the movie or whatever and just play it. I mean, and you see it like in the street, in the middle of the street, of the street. it's not like something that is going behind this. It's like people is really used to buy, to buy pirated stuff, so we, we don't pay for games. We are not going to pay for games. It's weird. 
It's my, when you talk about, oh, yeah, just buy this on Steam, it's like, oh, you pay for the game. Are you crazy? You, you know that you can download it for free, right? Yes, I know, but I like the features. So, but there is a good side of this crazy thing, is that uh, it's not a very contested market. No one is fighting for this little slice of cake. Also, it's really good for soft launch because uh, the Latin American market, the Latin America culture is really, really highly influenced by, Europea, by Europe and by USA because basically we are just full of uh, e European immigrants that came here and we are really influenced by movies and the, the USA culture. So you can do a, a pretty good soft launch there and have an idea how the game is going to go, make some changes, relaunch and maybe in another, in another country of Latin America. So it's good for, some la for soft launches. It uh, has money on it. It has not a lot of money, but $4.1 billion. Who doesn't want it? It's, it's money, at least. Uh, it's great for free-to-play, since people there don't buy for games. Uh, free-to-play games are really, really popular. If you see the charts of the highly performing free-to-play game, you will see Brazil, Argentina, like top rank. Then when you check who is making money, Argentina, Brazil in the lowest rank, but well, we play it a lot. We don't buy nothing, but we just see the videos and clap at it. So uh, also yeah, the localization, if you want to do a soft launch there and have great numbers, localization play a major role. If it's in Spanish, it's going to do pretty well. But keep in mind, Latin America is a big block, but it's not all Spanish speaking. You, some people give this idea that this block of countries Everyone speaks Spanish and dance salsa and like, do magic tricks and stuff like that. But the truth is that Brazil, that is a really, it's the biggest country of the region, uh, they speak Portuguese and Portuguese and Spanish, even if we can understand each other when we are drunk, is not the same thing. <laughs> also, you have some small countries or regions that talk another language, like Dutch or English or native language. So there you go. You have, it's not all Spanish. Also, but if you have it in Spanish, you have the sacred level. That is the northern, the, yes, the southern part of uh, USA. I mean, you have there a lot of players that are native speaker of Spanish, and some of them don't even speak English. So if you release a game in, in uh, Spanish Latam, because it's not the same Spanish that Spanish from Spain, uh, you will have this extra people that is like 14 million people. It's like a little Argentina that is inside of uh, USA. So it's a lot of people. And they spend more than regular Latin Americans. Now, talking about lo localization, when you are trying to make a localization, uh, to localize a game, not just on the language, but also add some cultural thing that can resonate on the Latin American people. You have to keep in mind that it's, it's even if it's like a big block, it's not this, I mean, you've got mariachis in Mexico, you have people dancing tango in Argentina, and you have people dancing capoeira in Brazil. It's not like you are going to add mariachis and suddenly all Latin America is going to care about it. It's, it's much more complex than that. So the thing that you can do is just make it in uh, Spanish neutral Latin America and don't try to change the game much. Just keep it as, as it is because as I told you before, Latin America people, it's made out of, um, of immigrants. It's a region made out of immigrants. So if you keep your game for the European or the USA audience and just change the language from Latin America neutral, you are good to go. So and that's all I have to say about the market. And now, something completely different. <laughs> Let's start, what can, what can Latin America offer to developers and business? Because, okay, we have this market that we say it's not that great, it's growing, but it's not going to bloom like skyrocket. But we have some cool features that we can offer to the world. Uh, we are highly profitable, do a low cost of living. We have a competitive educational system. And the public sector is now starting to pump money on making video games or startups that are tech related. So what do I mean when I say highly profitable, the low cost of living? I say that uh, studios can charge less for the same work because we don't have to pay high rents. We don't have to pay that much for food. So if you can sell your product at a cheap price, you are super competitive and you're still making good money, you can still buy good stuff, you can still buy your apartment. 
And also, studios can take more chances because they are not inverting a lot of capital. So you can see games that are more progressive or more weird in that, in that region because you, don't, you are not losing that much if the game fails. Also, and in the fail not, some fails are still wins because even if the game performed terrible, if you make uh, $5,000, you are perfect because you cover all the expenses and you have even money to do stuff and great. If you try to do the same in Poland and or in, in, the, in Sweden, you're screwed. But here it's like, yeah, you dancing with your maracas and doing all that crazy Latin American thing that we always do. Also, we have a competitive educational system. We have uh, in many countries, uh, that's not in all the places, but in many countries of Latin America, we have uh, a, free, a good free education system. So there are a lot of professionals out there and there is a devaluation of the professional salaries. You have a lot of engineers making the job of a technician. So the thing is that you can't charge the same price for the same work because you have people who know the stuff that he's, they are doing. So you have a, a competitive, uh, conti competitive employees there. And also you can train people there for free if you, you send into the university. And uh, there are people that is really good training for hire. Also, the public sector, the good guy, is <laughs> investing on it, like a lot. They give you, there are programs that give you seed capital. They have tax exceptions. They help to attend trade missions. They subsidize to get employees. They give you subsidies to pay certain service. They, I mean, they, now we pass a law that they even pay you the, the, the light savers. I mean, you really, they, so you don't have to spend, you can have all the air conditioners on because you don't pay the lights. So, the energy. Uh, so, uh, they give you subsidies to buy new hardware and they give you subsidies to start a new project. And the government really care. I mean, that's something that happened to us. We invited the Minister of Culture of Cordoba, the, the second largest city of Argentina, to a barbecue. And he came. It was really, no, no, but this is, it's a really weird thing. I mean, when you think about it, it's crazy. The, the, the next month, we were passing a law that give us a lot of benefits. I mean, half of the things that I'm mentioning here is from a law from Cordoba that we passed uh, the last week. There is an article in Game South about it. So yeah, it's, it's, they are really easy to get. They are, they are, if you make that barbecue for them, they, you can have it in your pocket. It's all about food. So a few examples of, of programs that are going there in Latin America. Uh, you have uh, the Fonsoft. You have uh, the Ley Audiovisual de Córdoba. You have Pro Chile. You have Fondo de Cultura de Chile. Well, you have Pro Mexico. Yeah, they are not good at <laughs> making names. They, it's everything Pro. Uh, and they, 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 they lay run it in Brazil that if you have a company and you invest in uh, video games, you then don't pay the taxes that you spend on the video game thingy. So, cool. Well, we have the same in Argentina. Well, there are all these things that I mentioned, you can Google them and ta-da. Well, why, but there, why is not even more studios around? We, in Casual Connect here in Tel Aviv. Well, Latam is really, really far away. There are not ent entrepreneurship culture. We cannot even pronounce well the word. Uh, there is a lack of business wisdom in general. And also there is a language barrier. I mean, not everyone can speak English or they don't feel qualified to speak English. I mean, you can see I talk like terrible, terrible English, but I already say I'm not here talking. Uh, so there is a, a language barrier there. So, but there are more and more studios that are starting to bloom. I mean, every year you have more game studios. And you have these this few logos there because I'm kind of lazy and I just take just some logos. But I could like be all night just putting logos in, a, in, this, in, this, in this place. So you can see all the studios that they are, they are out there. And they are, oh, they are also high quality <laughs> products. I mean, Master for Forion, Dog Mendoza, the Fallout Shelter. Uh, trivia crack. They are all Argentinian games that perform perfect. I mean, we are outsourcing for Disney. We are outsourcing for, for uh, uh, the main uh, game companies that are. So we are like we have like really good uh, people that know what what they are doing. So why are the regional leaders? Because it's not the same to establish a company, the company in Venezuela or in Cuba or in other countries. There are like some countries that are like leading. Yes. You had Argentina, of course. You have Brazil and Chile, but these are the three main 
countries that are pushing up the industry. There is also Mexico, but they are not that well organized like the other three. So that's why it didn't make it in the end. So these are the three more important, more uh, yes, more important countries that you can contact. <laughs> and they are easy to contact because you can contact the organizations that have all the developers there or most of the developers there. You have ADVA in Argentina, VG Chile in Chile, and you Abra Games and Adjogos Airs in Brazil because they are so huge that they divided the country in half and one half is from Abra Games and the other is for Adjogos. And also there are uh, LATAM uh, industry relevant events that you can attend if you want to meet developers there. There is uh, IVA and IVA Cordova, and there is Big Festival and Dash. They are two big events that you can attend to know more about these markets. And in conclusion, the Latin American market is growing, but don't expect any magic. We want to uh, make games for LATAM, then translate them to Spanish and Portuguese, and that's it. Latin American countries are great for a soft launch, and Latin America right now it's a perfect place to invest, make uh, your studio there, or avoid some sourcing from there, or put in contact with developers and start doing business. I mean, the state is starting to pump money in the industry, so what are you waiting for? Any question? Uh, in Brazil? Yes. I, I heard that people paid, you know, with paid cards. When, in paid cards, when, yes. they, when they use, like, when they want to pay for bingo? Yes. So does it change? Do they spend more? Do they spend it, you know, more with the uh, with credit card? No, I mean the the the, the main thing that you use is pay card. I mean, I mean the, the the I mean the personal card that you have, like okay. always. That's the still the the main thing there, in like in all places. But uh, Brazil is still not that big. I mean. If you think about it, uh, for instance, when Pokemon Go went online, we were checking numbers. And we check, okay, let's see the bigger country of Asia, of course, China. It's making just in Android that day, 3.5 million a day. And oh, let's check now Brazil. Looks, the size of Brazil looks as the size of China. They are like big. And we in Brazil was making $8,000 a day. So if you see the difference, what in one day you do in China, you take you a year Brazil of contact revenue that have to be like real the near the, the this the first launch of Pokemon Go or something like that. So that's it. Uh, hello. Uh, oh. So apart from uh, Google Play, what other stores are more popular th in these areas? No, they, I mean the, everyone uses the regular Google Store, Play, and uh, then the AOS Play. I mean the, the, the regular shop. There is no hidden Latin American shop that is. No, we use Steam, we use just all the main sources of... Thank you, but you are a wonderful audience. Yeah.